Hey everybody, Nick here, and it is National Knife Day. And uh, I don't know if that's actually a real thing or if Blade HQ just made it up and are pushing it, but whatever it is, I figured it's as good a time as any to do a quick collection overview. And so I figured let's go ahead and go for it here. Um, my collection has been a little bit in flux due to some recent losses, the Alamic Busk. <laughs> ah, damn it. Um, and some recent sales and things like that, as well as some recent pickups. But um, this is where it is right now on uh, Friday, the 24th of August, 2018. By the way, uh, through to Pelagos. Uh, can't wait to get some videos out on that. I should film that later. Anyways, um, but I figured I would go ahead and talk a little bit about what's going on here, and we'll just take it row by row. Um, right here, Ontario Rat Number One, of course, um, and the Rat Number Two always. Um, not knives I carry very often, but they're very actually. I think I carried the Rat 2 some time back. Uh, but they're, 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 they're mostly around as comparison pieces because they are just so damn good value-wise. Spydeco Shaman. I do actually carry this on a pretty regular basis. Well, maybe not pretty regular by most standards, but the thing is, this is a really, really good beatery, sort of hard-using knife, especially on days when I don't want to carry something more expensive. Uh, and so I'm liking that very much. Oh, thanks, Top Gun, for flying nice and low. Right, well, in the middle of the video, hey, whatever. Um, uh, Spydeco Delica, of course, size comparison. Uh, this is the size of my collection relative to the Delica. Um, I'm actually not carrying the Delicas as much uh, as much as I used to now that the FRN Chaparral is a thing. Because honestly, I think I prefer the FRN Chaparral a little bit over the Delica. But the thing is, they're still great knives. They're still great to have around for comparison. It's a thing. This right here is the Alamic Cutlery Egyptian Swish. And actually, this knife right now is going, there's an auction going on for Patreon. Um, that means there's a pretty good chance that this is the very last day that this knife is going to be in my collection. I love it. It's amazing. It's a beautiful freaking knife. But the thing is, it's never getting carried. And that, no matter what, that's the death knell of any knife in my collection. Um, it's beautiful. I enjoy taking it out and staring at it. But at the same time, I, I just, I, yeah, and I'm working on some other things for the collection that, you know, I, I wanted to free up some funding. So it's wonderful. I love it. But since it's a little big and frankly, it's a lot expensive for me to carry around, I'm not carrying it much. So it's on its way out. Um, Protect Sprint, my token Cali legal automatic knife. Um, actually, the only automatic knife in my collection. <laughs> Cold Steel Forger XL. <laughs> Ah, uh, that just it's just for entertainment value at this point. But you know what? It's a thing, uh, and I I'd, I'd be hard pressed to let it go at this point. Um, ZT four fifty two CF, not a knife I carry, but a beautiful knife, and frankly, a really good example of knife making. So it's gonna stick around on theory rat number two. Um, Spideco Spidey Chef has actually been getting a lot of carry lately. Um, this was my move out knife, and I found it. You know, it, you can see here it's a little uh, it's well loved at the moment. But um, I, I found that it was, it is a very, very good tool and one of the better things out there if you're just looking for an everyday carry sort of piece. So it's my salty knife as well as my, um, just overall, it's a great choice. Grimsmo Norseman, um, I had a Norseman, I sold my Norseman, and my buddy Sid gave me a really, really incredible offer on that guy, and so I did it, and uh, it's back in my collection, and they're basically forever. Um, Spydeco Peter Resenti Nirvana Reground. This is an incredible knife, and this knife actually became our kitchen knife during the move. Uh, uh, we, we had a terrible moving company who took like three weeks to get us our crap, and uh, therefore, we didn't have kitchen kitchen knives for a while, and so this guy, with its slicey regrind, became our kitchen knife and served admirably. Spydeco FRN Chaparral, I haven't talked about, well, I did a review and whatnot, um, but it's it's really a, a shockingly good knife. In carry, in use, in everything, it's excellent. Um, this is the uh, TRM Neutron. Um, this is the newest addition to my collection, I think, yeah. Um, and it's really, really nice. You'll see a review of it tomorrow, but um, there, there was no question at the end of that review that this guy is sticking around. Um, and I've been finding myself wanting to carry it more often than... I kind of expect it, and actually, I'll just put this in the pocket right now so I don't forget when I go to work here. Spydeco Sleash Bowie, great knife, not a $500 knife, but a great knife. Um, this is the uh, Millet Knives Torrent, uh, complete with the damage steel and uh, fancy sort of outrun color scheme. Absolutely love this knife, and uh, this one actually does get pocket time because it is actually a really nice tool. Completely independently of it being really fancy and pretty, um, it is an excellent tool, and so I'll throw that guy in the pocket and just carry it because it works well. Booze Blade Smoke, um, uh, my... 
only front flipper holy crap um but still a really nice little piece um still a big fan and hope he makes a lot more of these the z hunter i have to highlight at the moment how the sun is reflecting off every individual skull individually it's there's a fractal element to this Oh, the Z Hunter. Um, this little guy is a uh, GC Wall Street uh, knife, and this was actually my wedding day carry. Um, so I think it, it's going to stick around roughly forever as a result of that. Um, it's a nice little knife. It's very classy, and with the easy open notch that my buddy Toad Stick uh, ground into it, it's it's a thing. Um, and so I, I like that knife a lot, and it's one of just two traditionals in my collection. Um, this is the Demco Knives AD15. Um, I'm probably going to post this review coming up here shortly, but um, this is a knife that I was sent by a viewer and actually really fell in love with. It's completely ridiculous. It's completely not for me in any sense, but oh my god, is it compelling. Um, it's a really, really well done piece. And so there you go. Spyderco Dragonflies are sort of my go-to travel knife, um, but at the same time, they're also very, very nice just that to, to, to they have around even if you're in one location. Um, you're hard-pressed to get more knife uh, out of a small package than this. The Chaparral maybe being the exception there. Spyderco Delica and the Packerwood Scales, these are both uh, the, the Packerwood uh, Dragonfly and Delica, both Knife Center exclusives, by the way. This is a uh, Kershaw Dividend House of Blades edition uh, where I kind of ground off the red on the back here and uh, it's just, it's, it's a a nice little slicey knife um and in s35 vn oh yeah so a uh, big fan of this guy doesn't get carried quite as much as the most because the assist drives me a little nuts but it's a thing uh chris reeve die lock discontinued excellent really really cool piece though i'm big big fan of it every time i carry it it's just like oh yeah that's nice um leatherman wave is sort of my go-to multi-tool it's what's in my pack most of the time although the charge tti is out there as well but i like the wave a little bit more honestly um and just so damn good that you know there it is um and this also lives on my assembly table i have one on my assembly table um this is the north arm knife skaha oh i've been beating the crap out of this guy Oh, for moving, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that one got some love. This is uh, a new GEC pattern knife. Um, Northfield, I have no I I don't remember what the damn number is. It's like ZT with the the, the 45892. I want to say it's a 48 pattern. It's a big one, but it's actually really attractive, and so that brought it around. Then of course Spyderco Rody and um my the oldest knife in my collection, my little Leatherman Squirt P4 here. Really interesting piece. Um, and just really, I don't know. Um. Like I said, this was in my pocket most of the time in uh, in uh, the, 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 the high schools and whatnot, uh, college all throughout. Um, and before I was into higher-end knives, this was sort of my knife. So you can see it's been worn down like crazy after many years of ham-fisted sharpenings, things like that. But there will always be a soft spot in my heart. And I even did this orange peel myself with a wire brush in our garage. So, you know is what it is. But anyways, that is my knife collection at the moment. This will be my knife connect, uh, collection tomorrow at, uh, I think, 10 o'clock Pacific time. And, uh, you know, who knows what else is going to be coming into there. I know a new Alamic Busker is in my future. I am working on that because, yeah, I miss that little guy a lot. Um, and then, uh, you know, who knows what's coming next? Well, actually, I know what's coming next. I'm not going to share what's coming next. So, uh, yeah, anyways, there we go. Um, keep an eye out on the Instagram, on the YouTube to see what's coming next. I'm going to have a preview of this, uh, Tudor Pelagos here coming soon. Oh, amazing. Um, I'll do a watch update overall. And I hope that you all enjoyed this overview and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and happy International Knife Day to everybody. Bye, day.